Liar of the Lion by the Night Ninja 2 Chapter 8 Fury of a Sister Mirabel was concerned for Louisa. The larger girl seemed to do nothing other than eat, work and sleep. Mirabel was dancing through the square and saw Louisa rush by chasing a donkey. Pardon me everyone, but I have to have a discussion with my sister, said Mirabel. The crowd parted like the Red Sea as Mirabel strode past with a grace that made Isabella scowl. Mirabel walked briskly towards Louisa, who had finally caught the burrow. Hey, Lou, can we talk for a minute? asked Mirabel. I'm a bit busy, said Louisa. Said the donkey's in the barn, then we need to talk, said Mirabel. But I've got way too many chores. Sorry, sis, said Louisa. Oh, for the love of the lion, Louisa, be selfish for once in your life, said Mirabel. Louisa stopped. She'd never heard Mirabel talk like that unless it was to Abuela. She put the stubborn equines down in their barn and then turned to Mirabel. Look, sis, the town depends on me. I have to get my chores done or Abuela will be pissed, said Louisa. I'll deal with Abuela. For goodness sake, Lou, even Dios himself rested after creating the universe. You need a break, said Mirabel. Louisa sighed. Mirabel was right about Dios resting. If the Almighty himself wasn't above a rest, then who was she to refuse to at least sit down and talk with her little sister? Mirabel sat under a tree and patted the spot next to her. Louisa awkwardly sat down and Mirabel handed her a water skin. Louisa took a long sip and lay against the tree. You need a good outlet for your stress. Have you ever thought about learning to use the weapons Casita put in your room? Asked Mirabel. Is that where you got the bow? Asked Louisa. Sorry, I needed it, and I couldn't ask, said Mirabel. Why couldn't you ask? Asked Louisa. I was five, said Mirabel. Oh yeah, I forgot. You almost gave me a heart attack when you plonked a mango from the top of that tree. Where did you learn? Asked Louisa. That's my secret. Not that you'd believe me, said Mirabel. I was going to suggest that you went to some magical world and learned that since it would also explain the fantasy look you chose for the nursery, said Louisa. Mirabel stared at her sister in shock. Louisa noticed. Um, am I right? asked Louisa. Dead on, said Mirabel. Oh, what's it called? asked Louisa. You're taking this really well, Lou, said Mirabel. I love fantasy novels if I have a light day's work. I read them to escape the pressures. We live in a magic house. Honestly, the realm of impossibility is really small, said Louisa. Narnia. The world is called Narnia, said Mirabel. Wish I could go. It seemed to change you for the better. One day you're terrified of Abuela and distraught because you didn't get a gift. The next you're telling her to fuck off. It might sound weird, but Casita gave me loads of books in so many languages that I taught myself at least three other languages just to escape. I also got some records and a phonograph in my room to listen to music from all over the world. I'm fluent in English, Latin and Greek, so I understood every single time you called Abuela a bitch, said Louisa. Maybe one day, if I can go back, I'll take you with me, said Mirabel. You've mentioned finding another outlet for my stress. I always wanted to learn how to use swords. I was given, but I was too busy to ask for lessons. I don't suppose the Princess of Narnia can teach me, said Louisa. How did you know I was a princess? asked Mirabel. The way you'll carry yourself. Like I said, I read a lot of fantasy books. So it was super obvious just by the way you walk and your tone of voice. You obviously spent a long time over there. How long were you gone? asked Mirabel. Fifteen years. I was twenty when I came back here by accident. That was a shock and a half going from twenty to five in a moment, said Mirabel. I've always wondered why people want to leave their fantasy world to come back to the mundane, especially if their family is shit, said Louisa. I didn't want to come back, said Mirabel quietly. I wouldn't want to either. So you'll get no crap from me from wanting to stay in paradise, said Louisa. It wasn't always paradise. War sucks, said Mirabel. I bet it does. But the rest of the world always seemed to make up for the crap parts, said Louisa. 
Her eyes were shut and she was letting the sunlight shine on her face as it dappled through the tree leaves. Promise you won't tell anyone else about Narnia? Antonio knows because I use it for bedtime stories, said Mirabel. Only if you teach me how to use a sword and let me be there when you tell stories to Antonio, smiled Louisa. Deal. How does tomorrow sound? I can split my archery practice between it and teaching you. And you can talk to Mariano. He's a good guy and always willing to listen. You'll have to handle Abuela for me. I don't think I can take anyone being disappointed in me. And she can't be harsh with her disappointment, said Louisa. No problem, said Mirabel. The next morning at breakfast, Mirabel had packed up enough food for four and had stayed up late making some protective gear for Louisa. The larger girl got hurt. The larger girl got up to follow her little sister and Antonio. Louisa, where are you going? asked Abuela. I am taking the day off and learning to use the swords Casuta gave me, said Louisa. But the village, said Antonio, can live without their human pack mule. Dios rested on the seventh day. Louisa should be allowed to rest as Dios intended us all to. Miracle be fucking damned, said Mirabel. Mirabel, language, exclaimed Julieta. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll say it in English. Miracle be fucking damned, said Mirabel. She has a point, Alma. Dios rested and claimed the seventh day is a day of rest. Louisa has a God-given right to relax, said Felix. Abuela glared at him before Mirabel got in her face, drawing one of her swords and pointing it at Abuela. Listen here, old woman. I told you when I was five, and I tell you again now. You may be my grandmother, but you are not my family until you stop fucking acting like it, Mirabel said before straightening up, sheathing her blade, grabbing both Luisa's and Antonio's hands. Remind me to never piss you off, muttered Luisa. You could throw me with one hand, said, Lu said Mirabel. Not with a sword in your hand, said Luisa. Mama, can you tell me about Aslan and the stone table again? asked Antonio. Not now, Tonito. We are almost to where Mr. Mariano is waiting for us. I'll tell you tonight, said Mirabel. But why can't he know? asked Antonio. Because I don't know if he will believe it. I need to know for sure before I trust him with the knowledge of Narnia, said Mirabel. But Tia Luisa knows, and you spend a lot less time with her, said Antonio. Luisa flinched at the bluntness of the almost three-year-old. He wasn't wrong. Yesterday and today were the only time she had spent longer than an hour with her little sister in the last eight years. Wait, not eight. More like 23 years, since Mirabel was in that world called Narnia for 15 years. Tia Luisa knows about Narnia because she is very smart and figured it out from the clues about how I act. But I haven't told her any stories yet. Maybe one day I'll tell Mariana, but not yet, okay? said Mirabel. Keep your blade up and your stance wide. Keep your attention on your opponent, said Mirabel. This is a lot harder than I was expecting, panted Louisa. It's dexterity more than strength. You can hold the sword all you want, but it takes more than brute force to use it. I've always preferred a bow, but swords have their uses, especially when the enemy is too close for a bow to be used said Mirabel. Antonio watched in fascination as Mirabel taught Luisa. Mariano was making sure the little guy stayed out of the area that had been sectioned off with stones. Aren't there different types of swords? asked Luisa, out of breath as she clumsily blocked her sister's slow swing. Yes, but Casito didn't give you any training swords, so I had to make you some armour, and that's why I wrapped the blades in leather. You only have straight blades, which is good, considering those are the ones I know how to wield. Until you learn the basics, the leather stays on the blades for safety, said Mirabel. I figured that out. Still hurts, even... Still hurts to get hit, even if it won't cut, said Louisa. And that's why you dodge and block. You don't want to get hit, said Mirabel. Is today just blocking, or do I get to attack? asked Louisa. Just blocking? You need to get faster at it, because when you attack you become open to being attacked as well. So you need to switch from attack to guard on reflex, said Mirabel. Do I get a shield soon? asked Louisa, rolling out of the way from attack from her sister. 
I didn't see one in your room, but I'll see about making one, said Mirabelle. The guard post has a couple. I'll bring some next time, said Mariano. Thanks, said, Mir said Mirabelle. Mariano was busy helping Antonio write, in the only way he knew how, poetry. It was also a good lesson on rhyming, similes and metaphors. No one noticed Dolores watching them from the edge of the orchard. She could hear everything. Seeing how good Mariano was with Antonio made her heart flutter. He'd be a great dad someday. She had heard Luisa talking to Mirabelle yesterday, but kept her mouth shut about this so-called Narnia place. It certainly explained a lot, but it just seemed so... But it seemed just far too fantastical for Dolores to believe. She was almost certain Mirabelle was just making stuff up and appeasing Luisa's love of fantasy. But she had her doubts. The details of the story she would tell Antonio were hard to make up. Like the feeling of the wind on your skin as you rode a horse. The names of people in her stories. Some were fantastical, but four were just ordinary names. And she always spoke the most highly of the four. But it was Mirabelle's actions and skills that really made Dolores doubt the impossibility of the tales. Luisa's perspective also made it seem less impossible because their very lives were an impossibility to most people. So Dolores would do what she did best, just listen and not say a word. Bruno could hear the family from within the walls. Mirabel had shocked him enough to go back to his tower for one quick vision. Something told him the last one wouldn't be indecisive anymore. The new vision had Casita in ruins behind a poised and angry Mirabel. She was glaring down at someone while keeping two people behind her protectively. The rest of the town at her side, mainly the seamstress and Mariana. She wore that fiery dress, but she seemed also older. Parts of her hair lightened with age. The vision would shift her age between a middle-aged woman and a 15-year-old girl. But unlike the last vision, that was all that changed. The fury in her eyes seemed the same, and between the shift, they retained their age. Bruno could decipher that Mirabelle was only physically a teenager, for her eyes burned with a wisdom and power, but also love. The woman Mirabelle was glaring at was obvious. Abuela. Bruno was caught off guard when the face of a lion appeared behind Mirabelle and roared as a crowd flashed on the girl's head. Then he heard a voice. Something that was rare in his visions. Once a princess of Narnia, always a princess of Narnia. You bear it well, daughter of magic. Bruno gasped and the vision plate in his hand showed the face of a lion behind Mirabelle, towering over armour. Even sketched in green glass, the girl blazed. Why did that lion look so familiar? He snuck through the house to go back to the wall, when the nursery door slowly opened. He could see Mirabelle fast asleep, and poked his head in. He saw Antonio, sleeping below a painting of that very same lion. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Okay, okay, Mirabelle going off to Abuela in order to help Louisa. And speaking of, Louisa, smart girl. I'd absolutely love that, with my love of fiction, finding out fantasy worlds are real. Yes, please, sign me up for Hogwarts, take me to Narnia. And I'll also fly off to Camp Half-Blood for a training session if no one's complaining. Ah. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.